Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. You know, about a year and a half ago I did a video that I titled, We've Got Your Gas Pressure Without a Container. And that made the flat earth community furious. They're talking about it to this day, and in fact they've been talking about it a lot here lately. So since it bothers them so much, I thought, what the hell, let's just do it again. So here we go, fellas. We got your gas pressure without a container. There it is right there. And while we're at it, We'll tell the rest of the story you guys don't want heard. Warning! Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Any evidence you can have, gas pressure, without the necessary antecedent of a container. Any evidence of gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container. I've been asking these two clowns for a long time now to provide a citation that says gas pressure requires a container, and they haven't been able to come up with one. They haven't been able to come up with a citation because there isn't one. Gas pressure does not require a container. So I thought, what happens if I Google gas pressure? And this is what happens. I get this. So let's see what it actually says. Gas pressure is caused by the force exerted by gas molecules colliding with the surfaces of objects. It doesn't say a thing in the world about a container. Now, if you're talking about pressurized gas that is at a pressure different than the atmospheric pressure we live in, then yes, you need a sealed container. But the container is only required if you want to have a different pressure. Our atmosphere is gas pressure without a container. So let's listen to Quantum Eraser get himself all tangled up over volume, the gas laws, and some other stuff. Question. How can you have volume without a container? Back to the Baltard's Wiki alma mater. Volume is the quantity of three-dimensional space enclosed by a closed surface for example, notice how quantum erasure quickly reads the phrase enclosed by a closed surface and then gets away from it. He does that for a reason, and this is a technique he likes to use. He knows that this destroys his argument, so he doesn't want to stop and talk about what a closed surface actually is. Well, I'll tell you what, since he doesn't want to, let's do it for him. A closed surface is a surface that is compact and without boundary. Examples are spaces like the sphere, the torus, and the Klein bottle. Examples of non-closed surfaces are an open disc, which is a sphere with a puncture, or a pipe that is open on one end. Why don't you want to talk about that, quantum eraser? For example, the space that a substance, solid, liquid, gas, plasma, or shape occupies or contains. Volume is often quantified numerically using the SI-derived unit, the cubic meter. The volume of a container is generally understood to be the capacity of the container, i.e. the amount of fluid, gas, or liquid that the container could hold, rather than the amount of space the container itself displaces. So, in three sentences, we have container mention six times. You want to try that again, Whistle Dick? No wonder you have trouble with math. You need to learn how to count. Okay, you're up. Uh, uh, okay, let's go a little uh, over some uh, containers and gas pressure together. Uh, from sciencelearn.org, the atoms and molecules in gases are much more spread out than in solids or liquids. They vibrate and move freely at high speeds. A gas will fill any container, but if the container is not sealed, the gas will escape. So, what, number one, where's the container? And it better be a sealed container surrounding the Earth because the gas is going to escape. This is, this is simple. In Quantum Eraser's own words and using his own citations, what did he just claim? Well, first of all, he claimed that in order to be a container, an object has to have a volume defined by a closed surface. Okay, I agree with that. Next, he claims that to stop a gas rushing into or out of the container, 
when the pressure inside is different than the pressure outside, the container has to be sealed. Okay, I agree with that too. Enter the pipe. Oh, stop. Yeah, that may be about all we can do. 0.35. So, pressure without a container. Point three five inches water gauge. Well, we've got an open pipe. In other words, it is not a closed surface. And according to you, it needed to be a closed surface to be a container. But even if you somehow try to claim that as a gas container, we've got a problem. It is not sealed. What's stopping the gas that's inside that pipe that clearly is at a pressure that's different than the atmospheric pressure from escaping. I'll let you ponder that for a minute. There's an answer. We'll get to it. 20 feet of open pipe. We'll let it sit for a while, see what it does. Well, it's been well over three hours now. Our gas pressure is still sitting here. This simple demonstration showing how gravity can hold butane gas in an open pipe sent the flat earth community into an absolute tizzy. Alarm bells sounded all over the planet as they desperately searched for a way to try to explain this phenomenon and get away from the fact that gravity is the force that's keeping the butane in that pipe. Here's a few of the excuses they came up with. But the open pipe is a container. You cheated, Blue Marble. Well, you know, that open pipe might be a container for some things, but it's certainly not a container for pressurized gas. Let me give you a simple example of how some things can be good containers for one item and not a container at all for another item. How about this? That open pot is a perfectly good container for apples. Try putting a couple of hundred of these little guys in there and see how that works. Good container for apples, not good for honeybees. But we were talking about entropy. Really? Then why was Quantum Eraser talking about the gas laws? What do they have to do with entropy? Here's the lead-in to John's diatribe on volume. This is John talking about Boyle's gas law. So, spinning space monkeys, you see this? This is the ideal gas law. All this is the general, generalization of the Boyle's gas law. And what we're going to be concentrating on, I'll, I'll let you try to guess. You see this one right here? That's what we're going to concentrate on, because you can't have this law without that V. So V equals volume. So show V without a container. Question, how can you have volume without a container? You seem to have painted yourself in a corner there, QE. The ideal gas law is more than just a generalization of Boyle's law. It's a combination of Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, Avogadro's Law, and gay lussacs Law. But you make a good point. It shows the relationship with an ideal gas between pressure, volume, and temperature. And volume, as you so cleverly pointed out, requires a closed surface. 
That pipe is open at the top. The pipe has no defined volume. It's open essentially to the entire universe. So the pipe has no defined volume. The pipe can't contain gas pressure. And if you were right, the pressure of the butane gas should have forced the butane out of the pipe until the pressure became equal with atmospheric pressure. But it didn't, did it, Huey? And it didn't because gravity is holding that butane in that pipe. And my favorite, of course, but gravity isn't a force. Gas moves in all directions. Gas can't just move in a single vector. I know, it makes my skin crawl too when I hear them say it like that, but okay, that's what they say. So gas, which has random movement of the molecules in all directions, bumping off of each other, changing directions all the time, can't also be subject to an acceleration, which moves the entire mass of the gas and accelerates it in a particular direction. Is that what you guys are saying? Have you ever seen this demonstration? I don't know. Is it just because of the, uh, the weight of what's inside, the gas? You're on the right track. Okay. This van is filled with gas. It's filled with air. Yeah. Sarah, go ahead and punch it again. Goes forward. Uh-huh. Emergency stop. Quick. Goes back. Wow. Okay. The air inside of the van is actually at rest. When she accelerates, mm -hmm. more air gets back here and up front where they are, mm -hmm. there's a little bit less air. This is a great demonstration of how the acceleration of gravity can hold our atmosphere in place and produce the pressure gradient that we're so familiar with. Just like our atmosphere, when this vehicle accelerates, the gas inside the vehicle is accelerated. That causes the gas to compress and produces a pressure gradient just like our atmospheric pressure gradient. So the next time a flat earther says, Gas can't move in a single vector. Just refer them to this video. What did we just learn? Well, gas pressure doesn't require a container, just a surface for the gas molecules to impact. So the next time you hear a flat earther say the necessary antecedent of a container, ask for a citation. I assure you, you won't get one. Open pipes aren't closed surfaces, and they aren't containers for gas pressure. An open pipe might be a container for water, but not for gas, and certainly not for gas pressure. And gas molecules respond to accelerations just like any other mass does. Their random velocities are simply summed with any other acceleration, and you just saw a wonderful demonstration of how that works. Gravity is what is responsible for holding our atmosphere in place and producing the pressure gradient that we see. I believe that's the end of the story. Hey, thanks for watching. And remember, when we say, how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge, it's a question. Hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Shout out to the Patreons and the PayPals that have helped us so much with the Cavendish experiment. And I guess we'll see you guys on the next one.